What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training. It's today we're gonna to be talking about four things that all wide receivers should do, okay? So we're gonna be talking about how you guys can attack zone coverage, how you guys can beat zone coverage, manipulate a zone DB, a zone safety, then obviously the technical aspects of route running that you guys can apply to your game. So I hope this video helps you out, gives you guys some value, but also for those, if you're a wide receiver and you gotta improve your game, you gotta take your skills to that next level. Now, check out that very first link in the description for our ultimate wide receiver training schedule. So what it is, a full on-field and gym training schedule where we break down every single day for 28 days step by step, okay? So what it is, you'll get access to our on-field 28-day workout schedule where we talk about all the drills you need to do broken down into sets and repetitions and we include an instructional video where we break down each exercise and show a full-speed example and you'll get access to a 28-day wide receiver gym training program, all the specific exercises wide receivers need to do in the gym. So very first link below. Hope you guys can check that out. If you guys need to improve your game, let's get started. So first rider we're looking at from Jamar Chase. So the first thing that all wide receivers gotta do is attack the blind spot of a DB, okay? So I know everybody loves to say this, like, hey, coach, I don't get a lot of press coverage. I don't see press coverage. I'm high school ball, youth ball. I'm usually seeing zone because the DBs maybe aren't as talented. That's fine. So we have to attack the blind spot of a DB, okay? And a lot of that has to come down with your football IQ, knowing how to read coverages, knowing understand, understanding what a DB's responsibility is, but also running an intelligent route. So Jamar Chase does a great job. Anytime we are in zone coverage to get to this blind spot, I, glad, I gotta close the distance, right? Chase does a great job of trying to, quote, unquote, step on the toes of the DB. Everybody loves to ask me, oh, coach, well, if I close the distance with this guy, but what if he doesn't move? You have to have the mindset that I'm going to make him move. I'm going to make him bail out of there. So your goal is to step on his toes and try to get him to bail out of there as fast as I possibly can, right? So Chase does a great job of that. Now, what he does here is he does a great job stemming them to the inside, right? Got this DB's hips to turn because we closed the distance. We tried to step on his toes and we got him to turn to the outside. His goal is to not get beat deep, right? He's got probably help to the inside, which is why he is trying to force you to the side. Line, right? So Chase does a great job here of setting up this rocker step like he's going to be running an out route. This blind spot is where we want to live as a receiver, especially in zone coverage. So if this DB is facing towards the sideline right here, his blind spot is here. And that's where I want to threaten him because he wants to speed turn and get to the inside. And Chase does a great job of throwing that rocker step, staying in that blind spot to where this DB cannot see him. Because when he doesn't see us, he is going off of feel and he is playing a guessing game. So that's where we have to attack. Same thing applies if the DB is facing the opposite way. Let's say the DB, instead of facing towards the sideline, he was facing here. You'd want to threaten him to his blind spot, which is back over here. Like his chest is facing the inside of the field. I would maybe want to give him a vertical set to this blind spot over here, hit him with a rocker step to maybe force a speed turn the opposite direction to get him to sit on the fade, right? So there's so many different ways that you can attack a blind spot as a wide receiver. So you need to make sure that if you are facing off coverage, zone coverage, you have to attack that blind spot as a wide receiver, right? It's not about press releases anymore. It's about getting off the ball fast, getting to the spot that you need to, but also being able to create as much separation as possible like Chase does when we're in zone coverage because again this is a big window for the quarterback to throw to and when it is zone if you get the ball in your hands your mindset should be score if you catch the ball in the secondary my mindset should be score with this much separation okay let's watch the thing again full speed one more time great job by Chase closing the distance trying to step on the toes of the DB and then obviously attacking that blind spot with that rocker step okay so now we're going to be looking at this rider from Tyler Lockett this is again zone coverage situation how can you guys manipulate a zone safety okay so this is like kind of one of those concepts concepts where like maybe they've been selling off of it like again this corner's here it looks like he's probably in like a cover two situation where he's in charge of the flats right and so the safety's playing over the top and he's in charge of that deep half right so now at a certain point in time with the safety and a wide receiver when it's zone when it's especially when it's too high that safety who clears past a certain or that receiver who clears past a certain level like 10 yards it turns into man coverage with that safety it turns into off man right so that's what you guys have to understand when it's zone coverage so if you're out of the slot and you're seeing a lot of too high safeties looks like the following right here it's all about being able to sell with your upper half because you see how much he's able to get this db to shoot over how much he's able to get this safety to commit his zone is this deep half right corner sitting in the flats safety's got the deep half but at a certain point if nobody threatens him to the deep half it turns into man coverage he's not just going to let tyler lockett just run a deep post or run a seam and just run right by him because he's like oh that's not my zone it turns into man if he doesn't have any threats there now maybe let's say the receiver is coming here and he's running towards his zone maybe he plays that and leaves lock it open, right? There's different ways that you can approach this, but as a receiver, it's the same principles as if we were running a route against press man, against off man. You got to make sure that you sell with your upper half because where's the DB supposed to be watching, right? DB's supposed to be watching my upper half. He's supposed to be watching my numbers. He's supposed to be watching my hips because apparently that won't lie to him, right? But as a receiver, we know that that's going to lie to him because if I'm running like a, if I'm running a post, I could kind of angle it like a corner, then break this off. If I'm running a corner post, I could really commit to the corner, break back to the post. If I'm running an 
out and up, I could really commit to the out, get him to jump, and then get to back to the fade portion of this. You see how Lockett does a great job of stemming him to the outside, shoulders and hips. He's in stride. Everything about this is committed to the outside like he's running a deep corner, like maybe a smash concept. And that's what gets that safety to jump. And you see, he doesn't even have the smoothest break in the world, but just because he sold with his body language, that's what got him to move. So you guys got to understand, the second thing that all wide receivers got to do is when you're coming out of the slot or you're going up against an out, a safety who's in zone coverage when it's too high, you need to manipulate him with your body language. That's what will get him to, um, to kind of fall off this line, bite on a route, and we could create a lot of separation, especially using my speed in the open field. That's a great job. It's about five yards of space right there that Lockett just created. Okay, so second thing that all wide receivers got to do, manipulate the safeties with your body language when it is zone coverage. Okay, so first thing, got to attack the blind spot. Second thing, manipulate DBs or manipulate safeties with your body language when it's a too high man coverage or zone coverage situation. Excuse me. Great job here by Lockett getting up into the route, committing those shoulders and those hips, and then obviously getting that DB to turn his hips. Okay. All right, fellas, if you guys have not heard, we are going to be in the Arizona area on October 2nd and October 3rd for a quarterback and wide receiver training clinic. So it's a two day clinic. Hope you guys could check that out is the second, second link in the description below guys. It's a great opportunity for you guys to come out and get some great work. And it's going to be myself as there working with the quarterbacks and the receivers. And we will also have a speed coach there teaching you guys about 40 yard dash mechanics, running mechanics, and just being a better overall athlete. So I hope you guys can check that out. It's the second link in the description below, October 2nd and October 3rd. If you guys are in the Arizona area, I hope to see you guys out there. Let's get back to this video. Okay. So now sec or third thing that all wide receivers must do is that we cannot give indicators on our routes, right? So indicators are some of the slightest things that you could do, but the devil is in the details and how you get separation comes down to the details, right? So now this Hollywood Brown running route, DB's in zone coverage, right? Gave him the inside release. He's on the outside. There's like a press bail situation. Fine. That's totally fine. But we don't want to give this DB any chance to make a break on the ball. Cause again, when it's zone, his eyes are to the inside, right? He's trying to read the quarterback's eyes, not looking so much necessarily at the wide receiver. He's looking for anybody threatening him to his zone. So as a wide receiver, it's not necessarily the same man coverage principles. However, when we're coming off the line of scrimmage, we want to make sure that we don't give him any kind of opportunity to make a play on this ball. So you see how when Hollywood Brown goes to make this break, you see how he got great. He's got great pad level right here. He's in stride, but right before he drops into this break, you see how he starts to raise up. You see how his chest raises, his arm flies out, and he kind of reaches for that break. Again, he's a very talented receiver. He's a great athlete. He's a hell of an athlete. Very fast. Has a lot of success, right? And he's playing in the lead. But this little detail right here, if this DB doesn't have his eyes in the backfield, that lets him know that a break's coming. And that's going to make me take too long. So the third thing that all wide receivers got to do is you cannot give indicators on your routes. You got to make sure that we keep the same body language. If he would have kept the same body language like this all the way up into the route, stayed in stride, and he was able to just break right there without reaching for it, without leaning back, he would have had a more explosive break. He would have gotten a little bit more separation, and he maybe would have been able to get out of this thing in two steps rather than reaching out for the break, getting his feet outside of his frame, taking like four, five, six steps, six steps on this break. But still, when the DB's eyes are in the backfield, it doesn't make a huge difference. But if that DB's disciplined, maybe, or maybe he's watching those hips, so like it's a man coverage situation, we got to make sure that my breaks are precise and I'm not giving any indicators on the route, okay? So make sure we don't raise my pad level before the break, make sure I don't chop my steps before the break, and make sure I don't reach out. All three of those things are indicators and it lets the DB know exactly what you're doing. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Pretty good job getting up into the stem and getting separation, but just got to make sure that we have a sudden drop and I don't give any indicators on the route that I'm running, okay? So now, the fourth thing that all wide receivers got to do is you have to threaten a DB outside of his frame, okay? So you guys might have seen this clip, but the thing is with releases is you got three different lanes, right? So you got the left lane, you got the middle lane where the DB is, and then you got the right lane, right? So you got to understand that the only way this DB moves is if you threaten him vertical, right? If you don't threaten him vertical, if you don't threaten him in a specific direction, he is not going to budge. He is not going to jump. He is not going to do anything. Whether you were taking a wide step release, whether you were taking this little skip release like Cooper does, whether you were taking a diamond release, a slide release, you have to threaten him vertical, okay? So you see how Cooper does such a great job when he hits this skip, he's actually going on almost a 45. He's stepping outside the DB's frame. There's no way that this DB doesn't think that he's taking an inside release right here, just based off of his body language, based off of where his pad level is going, and based off of where he's stepping. So everything about your release is off the line of scrimmage when you face a press DB. You got to make sure that you step outside of his frame. Now, a lot of people are uncomfortable with this. They're uncomfortable with this because they feel like they're reaching with the cut, not if you bring your body. And the DB's looking at your body anyways. He ain't looking at your feet. He ain't looking at your eyes. So for all you guys that take those quick little short steps and just lean out of it with your head, you just give a little lean with your upper half. That ain't going to do anything. You really got to emphasize getting
getting outside of his frame and throwing outside of his frame. When I don't go out here and I don't bring my hip with the cut and I don't actually throw my upper half into it, he ain't going to budge. You want to sell like you're trying to cross his face. If it were an outside release, you'd want to sell like you were going vertical, but you've got to make sure that we threaten him either inside vertical or outside vertical. We can't be doing all this dancing behind the line of scrimmage. Let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. So the last thing that all wide receivers got to do, make sure that you are threatening a DB outside of his frame and actually threatening him vertical or threatening him by crossing his face. Watch it again full speed. Great job using that skip, throwing his hip into it, then obviously creating separation back over the top. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I always appreciate hearing from you guys. I really appreciate the feedback always. And again, fellas, if you guys want to know a step-by-step -step process, everything wide receivers need to do on the field and in the gym to help their performance improve, you want to take your game to that next level now, check out that very first link in the description for our ultimate wide receiver training schedule. And again, if you're in the Arizona area, want to come out and get some work in, check out that second link in the description below. Also, I'll see you guys next time.